we are, we always remember what our dads say and do. My dad is more like Jesus than your dad. Nuh-uh. My dad doesn't let anybody eat any food until we pray for it. My dad prays for one minute every day. You know what? Our church has pancakes. This is what my sister and mom use for their blush. My dad says that mean kids never know what they're talking about. Because their parents don't know what they're talking about either. My dad says to punch meanies in the face. Then my mom says, don't ever do that. And my dad goes to time out. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's beard is itchy whenever he kisses me. <laughs> My dad takes me to church so we could learn to be just like Jesus. My daddy prays for me. Then he makes me stop talking and go to bed. Then I get a flashlight and read my comic book. That's a sin. He's sinning. No, I'm not. Sinner. No, I'm not. R2, R2, R2. My dad said that if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. My dad never stays mad at me. My dad taught me to forgive, because Jesus forgives us every time we ask. I want a mohawk. I wish I had hair. It's OK. Your hair will probably grow back. Thanks for being our dad for all our lives. Good morning and happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Happy Father's Day! Thank you for being a vital part of Bridge Church Woodlands. And you guys know the drill. Go ahead and continue to like and share this stream. In the comment section are ways to stay connected, serve our community, request prayer, and worship in your giving. If you'd like more information, let us know by clicking the next step button, which will be linked below in the description box. Raina is going to tell you about our upcoming events. Bridge Church Woodlands, in partnership with the Montgomery County Food Bank, will be hosting a drive through mobile market this Saturday, June 27th at 12 o'clock noon. Our community serve initiative will be held at the Landmark Apartments located at 425 Rayford Road, Spring, Texas. We are so incredibly grateful to have this opportunity to serve 200 families in need while also representing the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. For more information about ways you can serve, please visit our Facebook page at GoToEvents or visit the Montgomery County Food Bank website at www.mcfoodbank.org. Help us live on our mission by loving God, loving people, and being the bridge. Good morning and happy Father's Day Sunday to all of our online family and friends. Pastor Martin here with my wife, Lisa. First, I wanna say thank you again to Bambi and Raina for connecting us, every one of us, with what's taking place with the Bridge Church Woodlands community. We, along with our Bridge Church Woodlands family, wanna say thank you for sharing your Sunday with us again online and home. It's been a pleasure over the last few weeks to just be able to connect with all of you. As we prepare for a moment of worship this morning, could you allow the ultimate Father, the Father's presence to cover you with his greatness? The splendor of a king clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice let all the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide Trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great, how great is our God. Come on, if you know the words with me, come on, say that. How great 
is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. The splendor of a king, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. Trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Come on, sing that. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Come on, right there at home, sing that with me. Come on, say that. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Come on, say this. You're the name above all names, and He is worthy to be praised. And my heart will see how great is our God. Come on, say that. That You're the name above all names, and He is worthy to be praised. And my heart will see how great, how great, how great is our God. Now repeat after me, say this. Say, Lord, you are a holy God. Come on. Say, Lord, you are a holy God. Say that with me. Say, Lord, you are a holy God. Because you're great. Say, Lord, you are a mighty God. Say that with me. Say that. Lord, you are a mighty God. Lord, you are a mighty God. Yes, you're great. Come on, say this. Say, Lord, you are a holy God. Lord, you are a holy God. Yes, God. Lord, you are a holy God. Yes, you're great. Now open up your mouth right now and give God a praise. Right here we go. Lord, you're awesome, Jesus. Come on, open up your mouth and give him a worship. One more time, lift your voice with me. Come on, say, Lord, you are a holy God. If you know it to be true, say, Lord, you are a holy God. Hallelujah. Lord, you are a holy God. You're great. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great. Great is our God. Hallelujah. This next song is the song that says, I stand, I stand in all of you I stand I stand in all of you Holy God to who all praises do I stand I stand, 
I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to who all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. And if you're watching this, this broadcast today, and you have health in your body and your children are alive and well, and, and even if you are in a predicament, that, but you're still here, I just wish you could lift your hands with me and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Lift your hands right here where you're at and say this. Say, you've been so. You've been so, so good. You've been so good. And I just want to thank you. And I just want to thank Thank you, Booker, for leading us into songs of worship this morning, songs of worship to our ultimate Father. And yes, Lord, we thank you for who you are, for what you do, and what you continue to do within our lives. Again, I want to say happy Father's Day to all of our amazing fathers this morning. Hank Williams Jr. said this, my daddy was somewhere between God and John Wayne. And I love that quote because it truly put the emphasis on how important fathers are within our lives. Right. And today we celebrate our fathers. We celebrate the fathers of this generation, those of past generations and generations even to come. We celebrate their grit, their tenacity, their hard work. We celebrate the fathers who lead by deed and not by word only. Those fathers that are about the action and not just about the talking. We celebrate the fathers who love when loving seems impossible. We celebrate the fathers who know how to pray and still put God first in every situation. We celebrate the fathers that through the good times and bad times, are still the beacon of safety for their homes and their families. Right. We celebrate the fathers who continue to speak life over their children. And fathers, don't ever stop this. Fathers that fight the battles that only a father can truly fight. Mm -hmm. Fathers, we celebrate you today. We celebrate you now and we celebrate you forever. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers. This message this morning really is going to come from a different aspect about a Father's Day message and truly focuses on our position as fathers, our divine position within our homes and for our families. And I'll read to you Genesis 3, 8, and 11, and we will refer back to this passage of Scripture later on in 
our message. But verse 8 says, And they heard the voice of the Lord, God walking in the garden in the cool, meaning the breeze of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Verse 9 says, And the Lord God called Adam and said unto Adam, Where are you? Verse 10 says, And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree where I commanded thee not to eat? When we look at this scripture, it brings a whole new focus on Father's Day. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk to us just for a moment this morning. First, I want to say, fathers, you matter. Yes. Fathers, you truly matter. Mm -hmm. And your position is imperative. Your position is forever imperative. George Herbert said, Father still and will forever matter. One father is more than a hundred school masters. When we look at history in reference to our fathers, Lisa, over the years and now even into decades, the position of fathers have increasingly drifted mm -hmm. from the divine intent, purpose, and order set by God from the very beginning of our existence. Okay. All the way back to Genesis 1. And when we look at today in reference to our current culture, sadly some have drifted even to the point of sheer absence within their homes and amongst their families. Finding themselves, these fathers, traveling haphazardly down the lonely road of extinction. And in many homes throughout our country, even this morning, mm -hmm. the father is not a viable part of the family any longer. Right. I believe it was Barbara Bush, wife of our former president, George Bush, who once said success does not depend on what happens at the White House, mm -hmm. but success depends on what happens at your house. And when we look at history and even statistics, even back maybe two to three years, according to the 2017 U.S. Census Bureau, 19.7 million children, and get this, Lisa, which equates to over one in four children live without a father. They live without either a biological father, a stepfather, or even an adoptive father in their homes. Research shows when a child is raised in a father absent home, he or she may be affected in these following ways. Number one, four times in greater risk of poverty. Two, more likely to have behavior issues. Three, seven times more likely to become pregnant as a teen. Number four, more likely to struggle within school and even their education. And five says, and the statistics go on and on and on and are completely staggering. Our nation and our communities, even if I could say our world today, are faced with the daunting truth and even crisis of this realism, the absence of fathers within a family. Mm -hmm. And let me say this to our online family and friends this morning. I believe that the biological relationship between a father and child is vitally important. And it's important to the, the intimate emotional well-being of our children throughout our nation. Lisa, the father is positioned by God to be a leader. Fathers, you are positioned by God to be an example, mm -hmm. a disciplinarian, a supportive system, a, a sounding board, a provider, a taxi cab. And within our current culture, 
Fathers, you are truly positioned to be the bank, right? And the list goes on and on and on. But when we look at it spiritually, this relationship of father and children always, Lisa, parallels with the master design of our ultimate father. Right. And by our ultimate father's intent, it is his design and his purpose for us to have communion with him mm -hmm. like never before. Right. It is said how a child views their father in the natural many times is how they subconsciously in the spiritual view God. That's right. Think about this to our online family and friends this morning. Every father has the grand opportunity. Mm -hmm. Dad, pops, whatever label you may go by. You have the grand opportunity to be the reflection of grace to your children. That's right. Through an intimate, and get this, relationship with God. Mm -hmm. That is the greatest example that we as fathers could ever even give to our children. And when I look at the father factor, mm -hmm. The father factor is real and relevant for every child and home within our society today. And the responsibility is very crucial. Right. The responsibility of a righteousness, truly, and hear me, fathers, I, I feel you today, lay heavy on the shoulders of all of us within our generation. Mm -hmm. And fathers... The greatest gift that we could ever personally give our children is to seek what we have been created for. Right. And that is an intimate relationship with our ultimate father. Right. Because the father seeks, the ultimate father seeks such to worship him. Mm -hmm. John 4 and 23 says, but the hour is coming. And now is when the true worshipers mm -hmm. will worship the Father mm -hmm. in spirit and in truth. Yes. For the Father, mm -hmm. right, our Heavenly Father is seeking such to worship Him. Many fathers may be absent from their home least because they are absent from God's presence. Yeah. Could that be the common denominator within our culture today. And when we are absent from his presence, mm -hmm. there's something that takes place and maybe it is a slow moving drift mm -hmm. that takes place within the life of a father. When we are absent from God's presence, Many times we become absent from the home. And drifting takes place. It is forever inevitable. And when we look at it, how it ties in, there's some crucial aspects of order. Mm -hmm. Because when we are away from God's presence, order is without blessing. Right. When we are away from God's presence, position is no longer with divine purpose. When we are away from God's presence, responsibility is now non-existent. Mm -hmm. And could it be that the fathers are absent from home because they are absent from the presence of God? Mm -hmm. Absent from the presence of God. We have traded his, his presence for performance. Maybe some of us, we have traded intimate relationship for immediate satisfaction. We have traded divine position for impure pleasure and maybe have traded order for whoredom. Maybe some have traded the love of worship for the love of the wicked. And when this takes place within our own lives, this leaves us drifting shamelessly from our divine design and purpose that God created us for. Yes. Fathers, when we drift from his presence, the, 
divine order of what we were created for is no longer in sync with his divine purpose mm -hmm. for our lives and for our families. That's right. And when this takes place, it leaves fathers positionless, mm -hmm. but still seeking blessings. Right. We cannot have the blessings of the ultimate father without the position of what the father needs in his life. Anything out of order, and you've heard me say this before, God will not bless. That's right. Anything out of divine position is not aligned with divine purpose. That's right. Does that make sense? And that purpose is to be in his presence. Mm -hmm. That's what we were created for, to be able to worship him. And let me say this to all of our online fathers this morning. There's nothing that can replace the presence of you. Thank God for all of our mothers, even on this Father's Day, and to the mothers that, that try to fill the void of an absent father within the home. Thank God for you. But when it's all said and done, God created the fathers for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that re can, can replace, excuse me, replace the presence of a Father. That's right. What the enemy tries to do, Lise, is completely administer distraction to all of us. Right? Mm -hmm. Specifically the fathers. And let me say this distraction maybe 101. And hear me, fathers, today. If the enemy can get you to focus on what you think you don't have, rather than what you know you've been blessed with. He will always have you questioning order and position, doubting God's intent and authentic design and purpose for your existence. That's right. Hear this. Order and position is not designed, fathers, to hurt you. Mm -hmm. Order and position in your life is placed and designed to protect you. It is not for your bondage, mm -hmm. but it's for your blessing. The enemy scheme is his attempt, and get this, to keep you from your intimate place of worship as a father. Right. There's an intimate place that you were created for as a father. Mm -hmm. And I want to go back to our opening text in Genesis 3, verses 8 through 11. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool breeze of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? Where are you? Right. At least you've heard me talk a little bit about this in reference to the position of, of man and the dialogue of Genesis chapter 3. Least I believe that there was a reason why God called out to Adam in this specific way. Mm -hmm. The leader of his family. As you know and we all know here today online, we serve an all-knowing God. Yes. A God that knows all and sees all. He knows the, the very end from the beginning. Yes. And I don't feel like this call of questioning in reference to divine position, and even, could I say, Adam's divine order was strictly tied to the geographical GPS of Adam's physical man, right. of where he was at that specific moment. Mm -hmm. But this call for action, saying, where are you? And even in the Old Testament, New King James Version, where art thou? Mm -hmm. Was a call not for God. Mm -hmm. But this call was truly meant specifically for Adam to realize, and spiritually also, 
that he was not in the place right. or position he should have been. Mm -hmm. Not only was he not in the place where he should have been physically, mm -hmm. but also spiritually in his heart. He was not in the place where he met the spirit of God every day. Right. He was not in position. Something had taken place not only in the physical, but also not in position in the spiritual. And what Adam had done, he had drifted from that intimate place of worship. Mm -hmm. He had drifted from the presence of the Lord. Right. And when I look at this, it's so crucial to understand that even despite the statistics of current culture, mm -hmm. no matter the labels that society endeavors to place on you, I believe there are godly fathers that says, here I am. Right. I just want to get back in your presence, that intimate place of worship. And get this in connection with Genesis 3. Fathers, when we are in his presence, we are in divine order. Right. When we are in God's presence, mm -hmm. we are in divine position yes. of what he has created us for. Mm -hmm. And that is to be a worshiper. Yes. That is to be intimate and have relationship with our creator. Mm -hmm. And by this, when this takes place in our lives, blessings will rightly flow through you and to your family. Right. When we get in the place and position of where we need to be in reference to relationship, this vertical relationship with, with God, mm -hmm. our bilateral relationships with our families mm -hmm. with our children mm -hmm. will prosper. And as we get ready to, to end in prayer in reference to this string, yes, I want to say to all of the fathers that I believe in you. Mm -hmm. There are children looking up to you. There are families, your family, that need you. Not only in your physical man, but also in your spiritual man. And they need you to be in the place that you were created for. Right. This call to Adam was a specific call mm -hmm. to let Adam know and a reminder to tell him, Adam, you're not, son, in the place you need to be. That's right. And that is the place of authentic worship. I want to pray for all of our fathers this morning, and I'm going to pray a covering over you, pray a prayer of blessing over you, of strength within you. Lord, we love you right now. We thank you, God, for letting us see another Father's Day weekend. God, thank you for all of our fathers that's viewing us online today, even those that are hearing us, and those with in our entire world, every father. Mm -hmm. We ask you, God, that a special covering continue to be upon them. Yes. A covering of leadership and a covering of anointing, God, will flow upon them to lead their families and their children, God, as you have desired them to lead. Yes. From a point of a worship, from a point of relationship and intimacy, God, knowing that the relationship first between them and you matters above all. And then the anointing and blessing will flow, God, through them to their families and to their children. We pray, God, for not only anointing, but God's strength to be within them. Strength to empower them, God, in these times of chaos and crisis. God, that every father will stand up and be strong and be the leader that you call them to be. Lord, we thank you right now, God, for all that you've done, what you continue to do. We ask your blessings upon their life, God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Fathers, thank you again for being with us this Sunday. We know you could have gone anywhere else and been doing many other things on this Father's Day. Uh, but we thank you for sharing your Sunday with Bridge Church Woodlands. I believe Bambi said it a little bit earlier within our stream, uh, at the beginning of it, there are ways to stay connected and we would love that and all type of uh, connect forms in reference to staying connected with Bridge Church Woodlands and our community. Not only a, a connect card, but also a prayer card if you're interested in prayer. Please fill that out if you're interested in serving uh, with the Bridge Church Woodlands community. Fill that out. And then also, if you're interested in next steps with Bridge Church Woodlands, please feel free to fill that out. That comes directly to me, and I would love to get you connected with uh, everything else that's taking place. And last but not least is an opportunity to be able to worship in your giving. And anything that you can contribute to Bridge Church Woodlands, we thank you in advance, and we are so blessed and honored uh, for that. Again, we want to say thank you for spending your Sunday with us, uh, at least a portion of it in the morning. And we want to wish all of our fathers uh, a great, an amazing Father's Day Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your day. I want to say we love you to life. We'll see you next week. Same time, same place. God bless you. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day.